In this video, we're going to do our second example problem involving a free falling object. So we have a model rocket which is launched from the ground and accelerates upward at 20 meters per second per second for two seconds before running out of fuel. So what's going to happen is that the rocket is launched from the ground and as the rocket is consuming its fuel, it's going upward and getting faster and faster as it goes upward. Now, in this part of the motion, it's not actually free falling. However, then the rocket runs out of fuel. And at that point, then the rocket starts to free fall, getting slower on the way up, reaching a maximum position, then turning around and coming back down. So we would like to find the maximum height, the velocity of the rocket just before hitting the ground, and the total time in motion. So as with our previous kinematics problems, we're going to follow this handout. So step one is to draw a clear sketch illustrating the problem. We have the beginnings of a sketch, but we're going to have to develop it. So step two, draw a coordinate system. So I always like to have my y-axis pointing up, and I like to have my origin at the lowest point in the problem so that we don't have to worry about negative values of y, which aren't really that hard to deal with, but they can trip us up sometimes nevertheless. Okay, so y-axis pointing up, I'll put a zero. So y-axis pointing up, origin down here, right where the rocket is launched. Okay, now identify a number of the moments of interest. So here I would invite you to pause the video and try this on your own. Uh, finish out the sketch, showing all the other moments of interest, number of the moments of interest, and perhaps even go on to step four and introduce the kinematic variables. All right, the first moment of interest would be the launch position. So let me call that zero for the launch. Now the rocket is going to go up, getting faster. And at some point, the rocket will run out of fuel. Let's call that moment where it runs out of fuel, moment one. Now, after it runs out of fuel, it's going to continue going up, but getting slower at 9.8 meters per second per second. So let's say that the maximum height is here. This would be where the velocity goes to zero just before the rocket turns around and comes back down to the ground. Okay, so moment two is the maximum height. Okay, then. The rocket, after having gone up, turns around, heads back towards the ground. And let's say that this moment where the rocket gets back to the ground will be moment three. This would be when it hits the ground. Although, strictly speaking, we are restricting ourselves to the part of the motion which is free fall. Now, when the rocket hits the ground, that's not free fall anymore. So this is really just before it hits the ground. Okay, so now let's go through and put in our kinematic variables. So I'm gonna put in moments one and moments two first. So here we're going to have time one. Coordinate y1, velocity v1. And up at the top, time 2, y2, velocity 2. Now down here at the bottom, I have to find room for the zeros and the threes. So I'll do my best. Let's put in here, time 0, y0. E zero, and then also time three, Y three, V three. We also want to put in the accelerations. Now we have one constant acceleration from moment zero to one. So I'll put in A zero one equals 20 meters per second squared. 
And then from moment one all the way through moment three, we have the free falling acceleration. Let's call that A13 equals minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, now we get to step five, writing in the kinematic variables. So now pause the video and see if you can go through on your own putting in the rest of these, if you can do that without doing further calculation. Okay, so the rocket is launched, and I probably should have said launched from rest, but anyways, that's what I meant. The rocket is launched from rest, so the initial velocity is zero. Initial y-coordinate is zero because we're launching from the ground, and we might as well say that the initial time is zero. At moment one, we're not really told anything other than that the time is 2.0 seconds. In a bit, we will work out Y1 and V1, but those require calculations, so we're not going to do that right now. Okay, coming to moment two, this is the maximum height. All we really know about this is that the velocity is zero. And now coming to moment three, this is just before the rocket hits the ground, so the Y coordinate would be zero, and we don't know either of the other two things. Right, now let's uh, now let's proceed to the calculations. So first we have to find the maximum height. So these are our constant acceleration equations. And we can apply them as long as we have constant acceleration from the beginning of our process to the end. Now, if you look at what we have here, we have constant acceleration from zero to one. So we can use these equations to connect moment zero to moment one. We have constant acceleration from one all the way through moment three. So we can use these equations to connect one to two, two to three, or one to three. We cannot use these equations to connect zero all the way to two or zero all the way to three because uh, for those processes, we would not have constant acceleration all the way through. Okay, so we're being asked to find the maximum height, y2 here. Now, we would like to be able to connect moment two all the way back to moment zero, but it isn't that simple because we do not have constant acceleration all the way from moment zero to moment two. So to get this maximum height, we're going to have to connect moment two to moment one, but right now we don't really have a whole lot of information about moment one. So a good thing to start off doing is to use our constant acceleration equations to find y1 and v1. So we're going to use our constant acceleration equations to connect moment zero to moment one, and in connecting moment zero to moment one, try and find y1, v1. So you can pause the video and try that on your own, and then rejoin the video. Okay, so getting started with part A, I want to find y1 and v1. So to find V1, let me just use this. I will use this equation as written to connect moment zero to moment one. I then have V1 equals V0 plus, now if I'm going from moment zero to moment one, I should use acceleration A01, and then delta T would be T1 minus T0. And here we can just substitute V0 is zero, a01 is 20 meters per second squared. I could have just left this at time t. I could have just left this as delta t. But anyways, that time difference would be two seconds. And multiply those together, and you get 40 meters per second. So how about I go into the figure and write in 40 meters per second? Okay, now as for y1, we would use equation three. Of course, we would change the x's into y, so let's do that. So we then have y1 equals y0 plus v0 delta t plus one half a01 delta t squared. All right, y0 is zero, v0 is zero. And we substitute one half 
a zero one twenty meters per second squared delta t two seconds squared and this comes out to be 40 meters very much a coincidence that this is just 40 and 40. anyways let's put that into the figure and now we have enough information that you can connect moment one to moment two and in connecting moment one to moment two find the maximum height so why don't you try that on your own before rejoining the video all right so we want to find y2 by connecting moment two to moment one and you might have noticed that if we take equation four and write it so that we are connecting moment one to moment two the only unknown would be y2 here so we'll take equation four change it a bit so we're connecting moment one to moment two the x's become y's and we will then solve for y2 okay so we have the 2 squared equals the 1 squared plus 2a y2 minus y1. And since we have entered the free fall part of the problem, this is going to be a 1, 3, which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, let's do the algebra to isolate the y2. v2 is 0. But move the v1 squared to the left. It picks up a minus sign. Divide through by 2A13. Take that Y1, move it to the other side where it picks up a plus sign, then switch sides. We then have Y2 equals Y1 minus V1 squared over 2A13. Okay, substituting Y1, 40 meters minus V1, 40 meters per second, squared over 2A13, which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Upon substitution, I get 121.6 meters. I will leave the unit checking as an exercise. So let me come back into the figure and put Y2 equals 121.6 meters. Okay, let's move on to part B. In part B, we're trying to find the velocity just before hitting the ground. In other words, in part B, we are looking for V3. Since we have constant acceleration from moment one all the way through moment three, you can try to solve this by connecting moment three either to moment two or to moment one, whichever you happen to think uh, would be easier. So give this a shot. Have these equations in front of you. Uh, pause the video and see if you can find an equation where V3 is the only unknown connecting either moment three to moment two or moment three to moment one. Okay, so this part of the problem can be solved either connecting moment three to moment two or connecting moment three to moment one. So I think it's going to be a bit easier to connect three to two. I'm going to use equation four here, but connecting three to two, so that I have the three squared equals the two squared plus two a one three, right? Constant acceleration all the way from one through three. And then this would be y three minus y two. This equation as written has already solved for v three. So we just have to pop everything in. V2 is 0, Y3 is 0. So we have V3 squared equals, actually, I'm going to write V3 equals square root of 2A13 times minus Y2. Now, do you remember that when you take a square root, you actually have a positive square root and a negative square root? And that's something that's important to remember here. Let's make the substitution. We have V3 equals, I'll leave the plus or minus for the moment, 2, A13 is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we have minus 
Phi two was 121.6 meters. Then square root all of this. When I put this into my calculator, I get 48.8. Now we're taking the square root of meters squared over seconds squared, which would be meters per second, which would be the correct unit for velocity. But now do we take the plus root or the minus root? Well, right before the rocket hits the ground, it's going down. Down is the minus y direction. So we would take the minus root here and our answer would be minus 48.8 meters per second. Okay, that was part B. Now let's go to part C. Part C was to find the total time in motion. In other words, we're trying to find time three. Uh, let me put in V3 equals minus 48.8 meters per second. Now, as before, we can solve this problem by connecting moment three either to moment two or to moment one using the constant acceleration equations. So I'd invite you to go through the list here and see if you can find an equation connecting either moment three to moment two or moment three to moment one, where time three is the only unknown. So we would like to try to solve for time three by connecting moment three to moment two or connecting moment three to moment one. The key here is that we are solving for a time. And if you look at the equations, time appears only as delta t's which means that if we're connecting moment three to moment two, we would have delta T equals T3 minus T2. And if we are connecting moment three to moment one, delta T would become T3 minus T1. Now, since we already know T1 and we don't know T2, we would much rather have a T3 minus T1 involving a time we already know than a T3 minus T2 involving a time that we don't already know. So let's connect moment three to moment one. If you pick equation two here and write it to connect moment three to moment one, then we're going to see that we already know everything except for T3. Okay, so C here, we're going to write V3 equals V1 plus a13, T3 minus T1. And I don't think anything here is actually zero, so let's just crunch ahead solving for T3. So take the V1 to the left where it picks up a minus sign. Bring that A13 down into the denominator. Now take that T1, move it to the left where it picks up a plus sign and switch sides. We then get T3 equals T1 plus V3 minus V1 over A13. Let's make our substitutions. T1, two seconds, plus V3 minus V1. So minus 48.8 meters per second minus 40 meters per second. Divide by A13, which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. I get 11.1 11 .1 seconds. And now we have solved our second example problem involving a free falling object.